Welcome to our practice. You might notice that I'm not actually wearing yoga pants. I'm wearing some sweatpants because I wanted to be really comfortable for this class today. Um, there are portions of the class that are uncomfortable and then portions of the class that are meant for complete relaxation. So, to be completely transparent, I injured my lower back on Friday morning and um, it's gotten better day by day and I, I chose not to cancel this class because it's a great example of how a class like this can benefit um, this type of injury and different poses and movements that you can do to work through to release those muscles um, and to help recover. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, you can find a comfortable seat, whatever seat you want that to be. If you want to sit on your pillow, you want to lay down on your back, you can start in whatever position feels good to you. I'm just going to talk for the first few minutes about yin and restorative yoga, the differences, their foundations, the origin, um, and all that I found in my own research while I was researching this type of yoga. So to talk a little bit about the differences between yin and restorative yoga, when we think about yin yoga where we are talking about um, going deeper into the muscle, using our breath to go deeper, um, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just allow this person to come in. So yin yoga has three principles. So the first principle is to find sensation of stretch, not pain. So you want to really be mindful within your body when you are going into these positions. Um, what does stretch feel like versus what does pain feel like? Pain is like an ow, very painful, um, it hurts, right? Uh, stretch sensation should kind of feel like soreness. So if you have soreness in your muscles and you're stretching those muscles, um, think about what that might feel like when you're stretching those muscles, you breathe into those muscles to bring oxygen to those parts of your body to help release those muscles. And then the benefit of this is you get an acupressure-like effect of the pose on the connective tissue. Connective tissues support, protect, and give structure to organs in the body. So that can include the, bot the bones, cartilage, fat, blood, and lymphatic, um, lymphatic tissue as well. So that's what con connective tissue is. It's also the, the, it's fibrous, it's like a gel-like substance within your body if you want to know what it, kind of the texture of that is. And then the second principle of yin is to become still and breathe. So there will be a, the first few breaths of when you're in a posture, you're taking a deep breath in and then you're exhaling and moving a little bit further into the posture. Right? And as you exhale, that breath is helping to release those muscles, helping you to go a little bit, a little bit further. So the second like, principle of yin is becoming still and finding that connection between mind and body. Because um, you're not only just still in your body, you're still in your mind as well. So think of it beyond the body into the mind as well in terms of your, your stillness. Excuse me for coming up here. <laughs> I'm probably going to do this a few times to just let people into the class, um, but I'll keep talking. So the third principle is to hold the pose. So each pose will be held for anywhere between two to five minutes, depending on the pose. Okay, so depending on your body, you may want to stay in the pose longer or come out early. Um, and our bodies are different, so be mindful of what your body needs and what part of your body might need a little bit more release um, than another part of your body. So, as I was doing my yin research, I wanted to know what was the foundation of yin? Like, where did yin come from? And it actually comes from uh, Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu is a Chinese philosopher. He founded Taoism, and it comes from this philosophical Chinese tradition of breath work, as well as connecting that breath work to movement. So over time, this turned into Taoist yoga. Yoga, the word yoga comes from the Sanskrit word yunsh, which means unity. And so Taoist yoga is like a fusion between these two philosophies. However, within my research, I also found that there is this Japanese um, paraphysicist who, sorry, parapsychologist and scientist who's also a spiritual instructor, 
who um, studied the chakras, which is a Hindu um, theory. And so he studied the chakra balancing. So all of that incorporated together created this yin yoga. And so in my study, I found that there was somebody, some guy, right? Some white dude in the United States in the 1970s who created this fusion of yin yoga. Um, and so I like to think of it as more of like the ancient philosophical term of yin um, as Taoist yoga. So formerly known as Taoist yoga and probably how it should be known today as well. And then there's restorative yoga, which is what we're also going to do in our practice today. And, and um, I thought of this idea of putting yin and restorative together or Taoist yoga and restorative yoga together because they were somewhat similar but also very different and people kind of mix up what this looks like. So restorative yoga comes from BKS Iyengar, which is a um, like a yoga guru in India and he came up with this idea of like the, the best way I can put this is mini naps in different poses. So we're going to be taking mini naps in different poses and your breathing is going to be calm. Whereas in yin, your breathing is a little bit more like you're really working into a pose. You're finding your edge into that pose and then you're holding that pose. So that, that's the difference between yin and restorative, whereas yin, you're like really working to find your edge and restorative, you're just breathing calmly in the position and super comfortable taking a mini nap. So there are a lot of benefits to both of these styles of yoga. Um, in both styles of yoga, it helps to relieve stress, helps to lower bl bl blood pressure, improves sleep and digestion, reduces muscle tension and fatigue as well. So to start off our practice today, I want to go over something called Apanavayu. Apanavayu basically means outward flow of energy. So in order for us to be able to breathe, we need to make sure we don't have any blockages within us. So to remove those blockages, to remove those blockages both in our mental and physical space, we are going to do this um, breathing exercise that's going to help us go deeper and feel more grounded in our practice. And the benefit of this flow is that it carries away the thoughts, emotions, and habits that don't serve you, right? Leaving you refreshed and open to new experiences. And hopefully this experience of Taoist yoga and restorative yoga put together today. So to reinvigorate Apana Yoga, find a comfortable seat wherever you are in your space. Now if you want to sit crisscross or you're on your shins, whatever feels good to you, find that comfortable seat. And take a deep inhale in. Retain the breath, which means hold the breath. And then bring your attention to the back of your throat. If you need to close your eyes to imagine this, you're imagining the back of your throat, then gently open up your eyes and exhale through your open mouth. We'll do that one more time. Take a deep inhale in. Retain the breath. Imagine the back of your throat. Bring your awareness there. Exhale the breath from an open mouth. And one more time. Retain the breath. Exhale from the back of your throat. This time, inhale deeply. Retain the breath. Bring your attention to your chest. Exhale through an open mouth. Again, inhale deeply. Retain the breath. Bring attention to your chest. Exhale through an open mouth. One more time here, inhale deeply, retain the breath, bring attention to the chest, exhale through open mouth. This time inhale deeply, retain the breath, bring attention to the belly, exhale through an open mouth. Inhale deeply, retain the breath. Bring attention to the belly. Exhale through an open mouth. One more time here. Inhale deeply. Attention to the breath. Retain your breath. Attention to the belly. Exhale through an open mouth. And coming back to your natural breath. 
trying not to change your breath, allowing your breath to be. And we'll do this again, moving from throat, chest, to, be to belly, three times. Take a deep inhale. Retain the breath. Bring your attention to the back of your throat. Exhale with an open mouth. Inhale deeply. Retain the breath. Bring your attention to your chest. Exhale deeply with an open mouth. Inhale deeply. Retain the breath. Bring your attention to your belly. Exhale deeply with an open mouth. Coming back to your natural breath. And gently open up your eyes. So this Apana Vayu breath is about outward flow of energy. And if you feel that you have anxiety, you're overwhelmed, you can always come to this breath and visualize the breath touching the back of your throat and then coming out, breath coming to your chest and then coming out, breath coming to your belly and coming out, completely releasing these blockages that you might have in this space of your chakra balancing system. So in order for us to work on our yin poses, we need to practice our breath work. So in yin poses, you want to have an equal amount of inhale, equal amount of exhale. What does that mean? So if I inhale for five seconds, I'm going to exhale for five seconds. If I inhale for four seconds, I'm going to exhale for four seconds. The longer your inhale, the longer your exhale, the better it's actually going to be for you to be able to stretch into that position and find your edge. We don't want to go beyond our edge. Going beyond our edge is called pain. We don't want pain. So we're, we're, our focus is to just meet the edge, pause right there, and hold the pose. So we're going to practice matching our inhale to our exhale. So I'm going to do it for five seconds inhaling and then five seconds exhaling. So I want you to practice at your own pace and movement of your own body. So if five seconds is what works for you, then you can practice with me for five seconds. If you notice that you can inhale longer than five seconds, or maybe your, your inhale is a little bit shorter than five seconds, then you're, go, you're gonna go with either four seconds or six seconds, whatever works for you. I'm gonna say five, just because that's probably average. So go ahead and inhale for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to pause you there. So whatever seconds you have, that's the type of breath movement you're going to have in your yin practice. So when we get into our poses, you might notice that you might start breathing a little bit heavier because you're like, Mm, I gotta get into this pose, right? You're like stretching a little bit more and that's natural. Do not hold your breath. Holding your breath is not gonna help your muscles relax. So take your breath in and as you exhale, you might need to exhale a little bit deeper, a little bit harder, more audible and it might sound like this. Right? When you open your jaw, that helps to actually release your pelvis muscles. Your jaw is kind of According to research and spiritual research, your jaw is connected to your pelvic system, so this entire system down here. So when you open your jaw, it helps to release this space, which actually can help to release muscles in your hips and your glutes, as well as your abdomen. abdomen. So practice, try it out, see what different types of styles of releasing the breath helps. You might breathe out of your nose, like an ujjayi breath or you might open your mouth and release the breath. So whatever works for you. Okay, so if you're sitting on a block or a cushion, I want you to come off unless you have lower back pain or you have tight hamstring or lower back muscles. So maybe you're sitting on a cushion, maybe you take your blanket and you roll it up, right? You wanna bring it here, roll it up in front of you, and maybe you place it underneath your sit bones and you sit on top of this. I'm not gonna sit on top of this because I have a cushion underneath me right now. 
your choice. So we are going to be using all of our props. I have them set up behind me um, just so that you can see. I've got my yoga strap, my blanket, and my pillows back there. So you're just going to sit into a comfortable seat like this. We're going to start off slow and gentle. Every position we get into is slow and gentle, and you want to make sure that you're, you're um, being mindful of the, how this feels in your body. So coming into your comfortable seat, notice which leg is in front. So right now my right leg is in front. We're going to switch halfway through so that we balance out our bodies. So find a comfortable seat, lengthen through your spine. With every inhale, lengthen through your spine. And with every exhale, relax your shoulders, relax spaces in your body that you might have tension. And then we'll take it step by step. So bring your hands in front of you, take a deep inhale in. Remember, same amount of inhale as exhale. And you want to move on your exhale. So take another deep inhale in. And as you exhale, you might walk your hands a little bit further. You want to keep that nice long spine. And as you exhale, you might move a little bit further. And you're going to keep going until you reach your edge, that point of stretch, or if you notice that your upper back begins to collapse, you're going to stop in that position, surrender your head, and hold the pose. I'll let you know when we're switching. Again, take about two or three exhales to get to your edge point. And then we're going to hold our position here and continue to match your inhale with your exhale. It is okay to move. Fidgeting is appropriate if you are trying to move away from pain and trying to get into your position. gently push yourself up moving super slow you never want to move too fast out of any positions especially in yin coming back up to a seated position and then gently switch the positioning of your legs so if your right leg was in front bring your left leg to the front rearrange your legs And just notice how this feels in your body when you switch the positioning in your legs. Maybe you have more flexibility on one side than you do the other. Totally natural. That's why we're here to help us balance ourselves out. On your inhale, lengthen through your spine. And on your exhale, begin to bring your hands in front of you. Take another deep inhale in. And again, as you exhale, take about two to three exhales to get to your edge. Every time you inhale, just stop in that position, breathe in. Exhale, go a little bit deeper. Remember, if your spine begins to curve, you're going to stop there and hold the position. Keeping our spine nice and long here. And then allow your head to bow and surrender. Breathing in the pose, feeling the stretch.
In your inhale, gently push yourself back up to a seated position. And we're going to work out some of our neck and upper shoulder areas. So just begin to bring your right ear to right shoulder. We're going to hold for about 30 seconds. Um, if you notice that your shoulders are coming in, bring them back behind you. Lift your spine up. And breathe here. through center. Exhale, left ear to left shoulder. And again, readjust as you need to, lengthening through your spine. 30 seconds in breathing right here. center. Wonderful. We're going to roll over our hands and knees. So my mat is actually underneath this blanket. I just wanted to put a blanket on top to make it more cushioned. Move away any props or blocks or whatever you have, pillows. Find your way to hands and knees, hands below your wrists. Sorry, wrists below your shoulders, knees below your hips. Nice long spine here, lengthening through your spine, belly towards your lower back. We're going to take a few cat cows, dropping your belly, lifting your chest towards the sky, elongating your spine. Exhale, belly towards your spine, drop the weight of your head. Taking about two more at your own speed and pace. And then stop right here in your neutral spine. We're going to work on our upper back right now. So ground your left hand down, right arm can reach up if you want a twist here. And as you exhale, you're going to thread your right arm underneath your left, threading the needle. This is going to help, up, help opening up your shoulder, your upper back, your neck. You can keep your hand here in front of your face or option to reach your arm long above your head, or if you take a bind in this position, go ahead and take a bind. Whatever you need. We're staying here for about two minutes. Just breathing, option to close your eyes. Remember that Listen to your body. If you need to come out of this position earlier or you need to stay here longer, do what works for you.
begin to bring your left hand in front of your face. And on your inhale, gently push up back to hands and knees. Take two cat cows here. Find your neutral spine. And then plant your right hand to the ground. Reach your left arm towards the sky. Oh gosh, is that a touch screen? And then you're going to thread your left hand underneath your right, threading the needle here. Left arm comes up. And thread the needle underneath your right, bringing your left shoulder and left ear to the ground. Option to stay right here, or maybe walk your hand long above your head, keeping your right hand on the ground. Breathing into this position, again, we're here for two minutes. Breathing deeply into the pose. Remember to use your exhale to go deeper and find your edge. And when you find it, find stillness in your mind and in your body. Begin to bring your right hand in front of your face. Gently push yourself up to hands and knees. Take two cat cows here, neutralizing your spine. a neutral spine here. Open up your knees as wide as your mat. Bring your big toes to touch. And here's a place where you might want to use some props. So if you have a pillow, you can place the pillow right here in front of you, or you can place the pillow behind you if you need that support. Otherwise, if you want to go deeper into the stretch, don't use any props. Sit back onto your heels. Bring your forehead and your chest down to the mat. And breathe here. With every exhale, try to bring your chest a little bit closer towards the floor. Breathing into your child's pose, using your lower abdomen. Imagine contracting your lower abdomen, trying to bring your glutes towards your heels. So imagine bringing your lower abs towards your lower back and then contract them as you would if you were going into a, a sit-up. Trying to bring your glutes towards your heels, breathing deeply into the pose.
on your inhale, gently make your way to your belly, extending your legs long. You're going to bring your forearms to the ground so your elbows are directly below your shoulders and hands are pressed firmly into the ground, lifting your chest up. So we don't want to sink into our body like this. We want to lift up. So activating those muscles in our arms to help us lift up. And then uh, curl your toes under and push yourself a little bit forward so you're reaching your chest forward. That's going to help to relieve any tension in your lower back. And curling your toes if you have tension in your lower back is helpful as well. So you can do this if you want to relieve any tension. Or you can even bend your knees to release the tension in your lower back. So this is a sphinx pose. This is a modification of a sphinx, sphinx pose that I'm going to take to relieve any tension in my lower back. But if you want, you can release your legs to the ground. We're here for about three minutes, just breathing into this pose, really counter movement. So pressing your forearm and your hands into the ground, reaching your chest forward, but also reaching your feet back. Or if you have your knees bent, reaching your knees back in space, creating that length in the front and back of your body. Remember to match your inhale to your exhale. Relax the muscles in your face. And whenever you're ready, gently release yourself to the ground, release your forehead to the ground, create a pillow with your hands. So interlacing your fingers right underneath your forehead, allow your forehead to rest on your hands. Take a deep breath in, exhale and sigh it away. <sighs> deep breath in, exhale, sigh it away. Feel your body sinking closer to the earth beneath you. <sighs> Lift your left leg towards the sky. And as you exhale, bring your left leg over towards the right side. And wherever it lands, allow it to land, or if it's hovering in the air, allow it to hover in the air. You want to reach your right toes down, down towards the other side of your mat. We're only here for about 10 seconds. On your exhale, bring your leg back to place. Inhale, reach your right leg towards the sky. And as you exhale, reach it over towards the left side. If your leg hovers, allow it to hover. Point your left toes towards the other side of your mat. Nice and strong here. Only 10 seconds. This movement helps to neutralize your spine, balancing out both sides of your back. Now open up your arms into a T position. Bring your right cheek to the ground. Bend your right elbow. So bring your left, sorry, your left elbow. Bring your left hand in front of your face. 
And you're gonna start to push your body away and bend into your left knee, placing your left foot behind you. This is opening up your shoulders here. Option to take your left hand and reach it behind you. Or option to keep your left hand right here. We're here for roughly two minutes. As you exhale, come back through center. Allow your legs to come back to place. Bring your forehead to the ground. Keep your arms on a T. Bring your left cheek to the ground. Bend into your right arm, bringing your right hand in front of your face. And begin to shift your weight over to the left side. Bending into your right knee and then placing your right foot behind you. This stretch is for your shoulder and your upper back helping you release any tension you might feel there. Option to reach your right arm behind you or keep your right arm directly in front of your face. Breathing here, two minutes. A deep inhale in. Exhale, come back through center. Take a breath here. And whenever you're ready, roll over on your back and grab your strap, your scarf, or your towel, whichever one you are choosing to use today. You're going to, if it's a half towel like this, you'll take corner to corner, roll it up so it's like nice and taut. So we'll do that again. Take corner to corner, so it looks like this. Roll it up and it's nice and taut, okay? So if you're using a towel, you're gonna place your towel or your scarf on the mound of your big toe, pinky toe, and heel. And for now, you can keep your knees just slightly bent, okay? Maybe you need a longer towel for this because eventually we're going to lengthen our legs nice and long. 
keeping a little micro bend in our knees so we don't hyperextend into the back of our knees. So pause in this position. We're going to do some deep stretching of the back of our legs and then into our hips. So wherever you are, you naturally we have a tendency of wanting to bring our legs as close as possible, right? Bring our legs over our head. But I want you to resist the urge to do that. Let go of any kind of ego. Grab your strap, your scarf, or your towel. Bring it to the mound of your big toe, pinky toe, and heel. And allow your legs to just rest in this space. Allow your feet to rest in this space. And your arms are just long. Make sure you're not like extending and lifting your head up like this. Everything should be relaxed in your upper body. Then if you notice that your lower back, your sacrum is lifting off the ground, we want you to work to press that into the ground. That might mean moving your legs back in space. And we're going to dorsiflex our feet, which means we'll point our toes towards our face, heels away from the body, toes towards our face keeping our feet nice and activated. And whenever you're ready, take a deep inhale in. And as you exhale, gently allow your legs to come forward. Using every exhale to do this, you might need to walk your hands above, up your strap or your scarf or your towel. When you found your edge, pause here and just breathe. We're here for one minute. Keep those toes pointed, dorsiflexing your feet. Be still in your mind and in your body. Focus on your breathing. And then gently bend your knees. Keep your right foot in the in the strap or whatever you're using allow your left leg to come down now you can keep your left leg bent or you can extend your left leg if you want a deeper stretch whatever works for you take both both hand, uh, take your hands and grab both sides of your scarf your towel or your strap so you, you have your left hand grabbing a hold of your strap the right hand is going to come to the ground by your side in a t and then allow your right leg to lean over towards the left side. You might feel this up the right side of your leg. Try to counter that movement, keeping your right hip on the ground. And just breathing into this position. Inhale back through center. Grab a hold of your strap with your right hand this time. Bring your left hand to your left hip and let your right leg fall over towards the right side.
right back through center. And then just pull it forward just a little bit more. So you're just stretching out your right leg here, keeping your right hip on the ground, left hip on the ground. Two more breaths here, not too long here. And bend into your right knee. Bring your left foot into the strap. Right foot can come down, right knee bent or extended. Dorsiflex your left toes. Grab a hold of your strap with your right hand. Open up your left arm and then allow your right, left, sorry, left foot to lean over towards the right side. Again, bring your right thumb into your left hip crease and then try to keep that left hip down. Try not to allow your left hip to come up too much. And again, you'll feel this on the whole left side of your leg, breathing into this position. Inhale back through center, switch hands, left hand comes to the strap, right hand comes to your right hip to keep your right hip down. And as you exhale, let your leg go over towards the left side wherever it lands or hovers and breathe. Inhale back through center and pause here in your central position and allow your leg to come forward. Keep your toes dorsiflexed. Breathe here. One more breath. Bend into your left knee. Put your right foot into the strap and notice if you're able to go a little bit deeper into this stretch. And bend your knees, release your feet to the ground. Go ahead and put your strap away. So whenever you use a strap, it's just an extension of your limbs. Helps you go a little bit deeper into the, into the stretches as well. Okay. So we're gonna go into restorative yoga now. And restorative yoga, again, we hold the poses for a few, uh, a little bit longer, but we're not going to be finding our edge in these restorative poses. We're just going to be breathing and relaxing and breathing calmly in these poses. So restorative is all about relaxation and deep comfort. So I want you to gently roll over to your right side and push yourself up. And now your knees, I want you to stack them one on top of the other. Grab your pillow or your cushions, whatever you have. You're gonna place it close to your right hip here, okay? Just like a bolster. If you wanna stack your pillows, so if you have two pillows and you wanna stack them because they might be a little bit thin, that's fine as well. You wanna turn and face your pillow. So knees are bent, they're stacked and then turn and face your pillow. So you're kind of giving yourself a back bend here. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, gently lower your chest onto your pillow. And you can turn your head to the right or turn your head to the left. Whatever feels good to you. If you have your head turned, I'm going, don't worry. You can just keep it there or switch positioning wherever you want. We're here for three minutes. Complete relaxation. We're not trying to go deep. We're just trying to relax. If you want to 
want to release any headbands or let your hair down to help you get even more relaxed, go ahead and do that. If you notice that your shoulders are rising, try to relax your shoulders away from your ears. And then every exhale, imagine sinking closer to the floor beneath you or into the pillow beneath you. don't have a pillow, you can still do this pose. Some of us might actually sleep this way. Take a deep inhale in, and as you exhale, gently push yourself up, moving slowly and calmly, you're going to switch sides, stacking your feet on top of one another, bringing your pillow towards your left hip this time. Facing your pillow or your bolster behind you. Inhale, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, bring your chest onto your pillow. If you brought your left cheek to the mat, to the pillow or bolster, you're going to bring the other side down now. And resting and relaxing here. If you notice your shoulders rising towards your ears, just gently move your shoulders away from your ears. It helps to move your elbows downward and relax.
on your inhale, gently take a deep inhale in. Exhale, push yourself up. And then from here, you're going to take your pillow, which was the long way, and turn it horizontally. And your pillow is going to come directly below, uh, directly in your pelvis region, so lower abdominal muscles in your pelvis. And you're going to lay directly on top of your pillow. And allow your chest to come to the ground. Create a pillow with your hands and rest your forehead on your hands. This helps to release your hips, your lower back. And we're just breathing into this pose. Relaxing and breathing. If it's more comfortable for you to bring your cheek to the ground, you can do that. I'll tell you when to switch sides. Switch cheeks. Take a deep inhale in. And on your exhale, come back through center and push yourself up onto your hands and knees. Then from here, moving gently and slowly, take your time. You're going to move your pillow back through the center. Okay. You're going to grab a hold of your blanket if you have one or if you have another pillow. You're going to roll it up just like this. You're going to place this blanket behind your knees or right where your heels are. I'm going to sit back here. So it might need to be longer or shorter depending on the length. You're going to open up your knees a little bit. If you want, it can be wide as your mat, which is why it depends on the length of your blanket. And then the pillow, you want to bring it in towards you, right in between your legs. And then you're going to lengthen through your spine. And this is a supported child's pose. So we're going to sit into our supported child's pose. If you want to stack your pillows and make it a little bit higher, you can do that as well. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, relax onto your pillows. Bring your arms around your pillows. And just rest into the pose. I'll let you know when to switch sides with your cheek. Your neck is nice and balanced out as well. Calmly breathing.
Notice your cheeks. On your exhale, gently push up. We're going to move our pillows out of the way. And keep one pillow nearby. If you have a blanket behind you, a pillow behind you, move that to the side as well. And come to lying down on your back. We're going to bend our knees here. Bring your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Okay. Right ankle on top of your left thigh and just kind of gently sway side to side. Arms can come into a scarecrow, so that means your arms are bent at the elbow, palms facing the sky. This helps to open up your chest. And then gently moving side to side and then eventually take a deep breath in. Exhale, let your legs fall over to the right side. Now, if you notice that um, your legs don't fall over and, you, and they're kind of hovering in the air, you're going to take your pillow and place it underneath your right hip and allow your legs to come to rest here. Breathing into this position. Breathing calmly. On your exhale, gently come back through center. Go ahead and move your pillow to the side. And then switch positioning. Bring your left ankle to your right thigh and gently sway side to side. Just for a few breaths here. gently let your legs fall over to the left side and same thing here if you notice your right hip coming off the ground and your legs aren't actually coming towards the ground that's fine bring your pillow as close underneath your left hip as possible and allow your legs to fall over wherever they might keeping your arms in a scarecrow position or a T position breathe here
exhale, come back through center. Move your pillow out of the way. You're gonna bring your feet together and open up your knees into a butterfly position. Now, you have the option of placing a pillow underneath your knees if you have two pillows, right? Right here as support. Or you can just allow your legs to open, whatever works for you. If you don't have two pillows but you do have a blanket, you can also use a blanket on one side versus the other. And bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly, and breathe. From here, as you exhale, close your knees, bringing your knees together. And you're going to set up for your final resting phase, which is a Shavasana. Um, I recommend placing a pillow underneath your knees. Right? You can place a pillow underneath your knees. You can place a pillow underneath your head. Whatever works for you. And then grab your blanket, open it up and place it on top of you so you're nice and cozy if you'd like to, or if you want that cool air, you can feel that cool air as well. Allow your hands to come by your side facing the sky. You can keep your knees open in that butterfly position as well. Whatever works. Setting yourself up in your Shavasana, making whatever movements you need right now, like your fidgets, not necessarily yogic movements, just fidgeting, getting your body comfortable in your shavasana. Move your shoulders away from your ears, bring your chin down just slightly. Allow the muscles on your face to relax and calmly breathe.
begin to bring awareness back into your breath. Deepening your breath. Bring your awareness back into your body, making gentle movements. Wiggling your toes or your fingers. Rolling your ankles and your wrists. Reach your arms long above your head and point your toes, giving yourself a nice long stretch here. Bend your knees and roll over to the right side using your arms as a pillow or use your pillow as a pillow. Pause in the fetal position. The fetal position is the position of rebirth and reawakening as if you've just been given a new life to live. Give gratitude to the way your body moves and breathes. Give gratitude where gratitude is deserved. Take five full breaths here, five breaths of gratitude. Whenever you're ready, gently push yourself up into a seated position. Allow your eyes to stay closed or have a soft gaze. Allow your hands to rest on your knees or your thighs, wherever they land. Take a deep breath in, side away. Deep breath in, release. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. I'll ohm one time to close our practice. You may ohm with me or just listen to the sound of ohm. Thank you for flowing with me. I hope this brought you some release today, some rest and relaxation. Thank you.